All right. So let's let's open it up to any questions that you might have. So I think we've got a, a few people from Toyota who are just joining us. Looks like it's uh, Kyler, is that correct? Yes. Okay, welcome Kyler. Thank you. And uh, I understand you're a BYU grad, is that correct? Or did I, did I, do I, am I misremembering? Yes, yeah, uh, mechanical engineering. Um, I did uh, bachelor's and master's. Um, I worked with, um, in the compliant mechanisms research group with Dr. Howell. Okay, great. I did the same. When did you graduate? I graduated uh, three and a half, well, three and a half years ago. Um, who, who is this? This is Eric Dodgen. I did research oh, okay. with Anton Bowden and Dr. Howell, and I was in the CMR as well. But oh, I great. finished up in 2011. Okay. Um, are you? So you're not at BYU anymore? No. No, I'm. I'm all over the place. Okay. <laughs> I'm out in industry now. Okay. And so you're with Toyota. Yes. Cool. And then it looks like there's one other uh, member of your team. I don't know if I'm going to present present the name or say the name right is it z c way oh uh, yes yes this is z way okay all right so you guys are in what what part of toyota what are what's your area where, what areas are you in uh we are in a, a a crash safety team so mostly working on uh structural uh, uh structural cie okay Yep. Okay, so is, is Jonathan your manager? Yes. Okay, great. Welcome. Let me just, um, I want to make a couple of notes about, uh, just say a few things about the notes, which, uh, you know, like I said at the beginning of class, we are putting this course together in real time as we go through it. So there's going to be churn, and um, I hope it's not too much churn. Uh, I did make some updates here. Let me go through a few things which you'll want to want to know. Okay, so this idea of the flex representation, I broke it out into three um, three topics, and each topic now has homework. The only uh, new problem though, I just kind of moved problems around. Uh, the only new problem so far is this one right here. Um, this is the one that was already there. I'll come back to this in a moment. Then, uh, so this just kind of goes through the continuous representation. But I decided to generalize things. I was gonna do this generalization later but as I've taught the course, I, I, re, I, I realized that it would be best to just introduce it immediately uh, rather than going through this twice. Uh, so there's a slight generalization here that I'll come back to, uh, which is where this idea of Nietzsche's, Nietzsche's method comes from. So this is a new, a new topic here. Then uh, the next one, is unchanged. This is the uh, all the stuff about the basis functions, about splines, Bezier extraction. Uh, these problems have not changed. They're the same as before. And I am in the process now of creating some problems for this last topic, which will have to do with, I derived some analytic solutions that we can use to do some convergence studies and implement some di several different methods here. And I have not finished this lecture. I've I added a section on linear, how to solve the linear systems of equations. Uh, so I'll go through these things on Monday. So on Monday, I'm gonna go through these generalizations that I've added to the notes so that you can see how that fits. And then I'll finish hopefully this section on uh, solving the linear systems of equations. And then I'll also have some exercises posted for things that I'd like you to solve. 
So um, I'm happy to answer any questions about that if you have if you've noticed the the changes and had any further questions about it. When we do our um, submission and our gradings right now in Learning Suite, it's all just as homework four. Do we want to do you want us to submit all the four, five, and six sections in that? Yeah, so I will I will update that um, okay. so that it's clear where what they map to. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. Well, uh, for those of you who are just joining on Friday is as a recitation period where I answer students' questions about homework problems or other concepts that we've talked about. Uh, so I'm happy to do that again, if you have any. All right, hey, Dr. Scott, it's Kenan. Um, I had a question about the assembly code that's part of this FRM. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just trying to put together some more functions, noticing that a lot of these functions kind of rely on knowing the number of elements that we have but at the same time, we're also putting in a lot of uniform vectors. For example, our P vector, it's all the same value. Our rules vector for computing quadratures, all the same value. I'm just wondering if you think it's beneficial to keep those as vectors or do it as a value and then also input the number of elements. Ah, okay. So number of elements probably should be let me add that right now. That seems to be a parameter that needs to be yeah. put in. So let's do, in the notes I call it that. And then uh, when you compute your mesh, you're gonna need to pass in that's a good catch. And then okay. I think this probably in your compute quad well. Yeah, compute quadrature would um no, you can get that from the oh, let's see, compute quadrature, the rules. No, that's enough because this is a vector, isn't it? Right now. Oh, that's gonna be a vector. Okay. Yeah, that should be equal to the number of elements. Degrees. Oh, oh, oh! Wait a minute! 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 Okay, now, now I'm remembering what I why I didn't do that, Kenan. Okay. Because the size of the vec the degrees vector is the number of elements. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now. So I'm we good. should keep it in that way, so it's more generalized for when we trans kind of transfer into non-uniform vectors. Yeah, I okay. what I would do. Perfect. I'll work on that way then. Thank you. Yeah, let's go through. So, who's here? If 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 on the, um, if on the Zoom, can if you're an enrolled BYU student, can you raise your hand so that it's easier for me to spot you in the list? That would be really helpful. Okay, great. Oh, Carl Merkley is an enrolled BYU student. I'm an enrolled BYU student. Oh, you raised your hand. Oh. Yep. You know, you can, if you want to be an enrolled BYU student, you can, me, yeah, you can. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, guys. Now, I, now you all pop to the top of the screen. Okay, so let's uh, just go through each of you, and I just like a little update on where you're at, and just give me an idea of uh, your feedback is really important. And like I say, I know there's a lot of churn, so I hope that's not causing too much heartache, heartburn for you. Um, okay, Kenan, any other comments or questions that, that you have? Yeah, so I guess personally, I've been focusing more on writing this flex representation method algorithm than actually doing the other homework problems right now. But I've been making good progress. I finished up my compute mesh function this week. And so now I'm focusing on editing my quadrature uh, functions and making other little edits to past functions I've created. Okay, great. All right, Rebecca, you're next in the list. How are things going for you? So they're going great. I I like that uh, you split the 
the fourth lesson into three sections for the next group of people because mm -hmm. it was really long. Yeah. Um, I'm also focusing on this uh, program right now because it seemed to make most sense to get it done before I put the homework questions into this program. Mm -hmm. And so currently I'm just hard coding things in it uh, to make sense of every, well, all the functions, and then I'll go through and generalize them. Okay. So have you gotten to the point where you're assembling anything yet? Not yet. I've um, been trying to do compute mesh, uh, compute quadrature, and then the bases functions and the well, I mean, compute basis, I didn't know how to deal with that. So I was trying to work through that and uh, compute geometry. Yeah, so mm -hmm. working through those. Okay, great. Okay, thanks, Rebecca. Kaylin, uh, what's your status? Um, so I think I've um, pretty much so how should i say this i was halfway through probably about assemble k up until the point that you move the invert map outside of assemble k so i have to go back and, and write those um and then continue with finishing on assemble k um yeah that's pretty much where i'm at okay okay tyler that's my son's name oh <laughs> nice um, yeah, I am also working on the compute mesh, compute quadrature. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm pretty close on those. Um, just trying to get those a little bit more refined. Um, yeah, this week I was mostly just trying to look through like the entire code as a whole and um, reading through the notes too to make sure that I'm like understanding like what the purpose of each of these um, functions are. Um, trying to go through those notes that we went through on the last recitation period of um, what well, all those, um, I'm forgetting the word, but the sub um, functions and then like the, yeah, the subroutines. Mm -hmm. So I've just been looking through those, trying to see how to code those in and everything, but I think it's going pretty good. Yeah, okay, thanks Tyler. Okay, Lindsay. Hey, yeah, um, I haven't had a chance to start working on this algorithm yet. I know I'm a little bit behind. I'm still working on homework three, the algorithm for the best approximation. Mm. But I've been reading through. It's just taking me a little bit longer to understand the concepts, but I've been able to find some videos and I'm still working on it. It's just taking a little bit longer. Yeah, you. Um, yeah, I think this is the first time that I've talked to you. Isn't yeah. It? <laughs> Yeah. So how, are you trying to catch up or what's the st your status? Yeah, I'm just trying to catch up. I haven't, so I'm an undergrad right now. So I haven't had much experience with this, but just, <laughs> I, I definitely has. am working on it. <laughs> Nobody, I don't think, so you're in civil or mechanical? Mechanical. Okay. All right. You jumped right into the deep end of the pool. I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice to meet you, Lindsay. All right. Uh, uh, Kirk. Yeah, so I've uh, worked on this and I've got the compute quadrature. I just started looking into the compute mesh. I'm trying to figure out how to how to get all that. Um, I did have a question about the I saw the xi sub l and xi sub r. Is that just the um, the length parameters? Just the left and the right the end points. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was. So yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, I'm just going through that right now, figuring out how to, to get those outputs, and then we'll work on to the Ember map and so on. Okay, so this is the, so let me ask you a question. The, the challenge that I always run into in this course is that the lectures move a lot faster than the students can keep up with the coding. So there's a couple of options here. Um, because I, there's several more topics that would be good to cover, but I don't, it's really actually, most of the learning goes on 
when you're wrestling with the algorithms because it kind of forces you to crystallize all of the important ideas. So um, I have a couple of thoughts about this, but maybe a question that I could ask the students first is what can I do? It could be writing more details in the notes. It could be posting some code. It could be a, a whole number of things. How could I accelerate your progress without like kind of jeopardizing the learning experience? One thing that I've noticed in looking at this assembly kind of pseudocode that you've got up on the screen right now is that you don't have um, you don't have to find what all of these inputs are necessarily mm -hmm. in the in some of these functions. And so that's kind of forced me to have to ask what each of them is. Mm -hmm. And so, oh wait, I guess, the, oh, they're up above, I guess. They, that has been put in, I don't know. Never mind, let's drop that. <laughs> well, it's been, a, it's been an evolution, right? It hasn't always been the way it is right now. So, any other thoughts? I think this has been talked about before. I think just more examples. Um, maybe in the notes. I don't know exactly how to give an example without just telling us how to do it because that's, like you said, yeah. jeopardizing the learning process. But um, what about it? Um, so there, there's a couple of things I could do. I'm thinking of taking each of these subroutines and creating a section in the notes where I create kind of like the pseudo code for that so that. Um, you can use as much of that information as you want. That's one possibility. I think that would be really helpful. So you're not just kind of dreaming up. Because I'm, I know that for many of you, this is the first time you've been asked to, to transform ideas into algorithms um, independently. And that's a, that is a skill that has to be learned over time. So that's one thing that I could do. Chris Wetton is writing an entire code that does this. Um, so it's written in Julia. So we could post that. And then you guys could actually have a working code that you could use to like compare your code to. Um, Chris, what's the status of that? I think Chris is out this morning. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay. I think he's about done with it. Would that help? I've never seen Julia, so I guess it would depend on how different Julia is <laughs> from what I'm normally used to seeing. So it sounds like maybe the first thing to do would be to create some information about each subroutine. Is that is that fair? Yeah, the subroutine information I feel like would be really helpful for me because I feel like I'm, I, I think I have them pretty good, but I just like to see the, see some other code for the subroutine just to make sure that I'm on the right track with each of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, I will do that. So what I'd like to do next week is, um, I would like to try and see if we can get all of you through the assembly, which would mean that we would have um, three working sessions next week rather than introducing new material where I will work on filling out these um, routines. And then the only thing that I would require from you guys is an agreement that you would set aside enough time to, to um, make a push. Are any of you not in a position to do that? Okay, so I'm, I'm assuming then, then you are in a position to do that. Or if you d aren't, you're not gonna tell me, one or the other. <laughs> okay, no, good. I, I like it, I like, um... 
being able to go through the code and figure out uh, what each part does. And I've been right. appreciating what uh, the question and answers and just the way how you go through them this week as well. So. Okay, good. Okay, so then let's let's do that. Let's plan on that on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of next week. The goal will be to um, help each of you get through this first algorithm. So come prepared to discuss. I don't really care where you're at currently, but um, by the end of the week, I want you to be pretty close to computing some values for this. Dr. Scott, if we're going to do that, would it be helpful if we like set aside specific functions that we're going to talk about for each day? Yeah, probably would be. I think that might just focus us a little bit so we can have more cohesive discussion and be on the same page. All right, let's, I think I can probably just do that right now, actually. Okay, so let's do, let me just jot down on the bottom here. Okay, so what do we have? Uh, can you guys see me working on the? Yeah, we can. Okay, so compute mesh is that one that could you could use some details on or not? Is it just all of them? We just you want to just break them up into different days? Yes, please. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Okay. okay so compute mesh and compute quadrature is probably enough for Monday. Let's and something see. I don't know if this is necessarily gonna come up, but could we go over editing our basis functions? Just because we okay. have to add in the derivatives now. I think that that will come in, in, you mean the in the compute base, how to compute the basis? Is that what you mean? Right, right. Yeah, so I'm gonna- Okay, I'm gonna perfect. All these. So, perfect. Uh, let's see, what other ones do we have? The invert map, compute basis. Okay, is there any other ones? There's uh, compute mesh, compute quadrature, invert map. Yeah, honestly, that is probably Yeah, I would say Monday it's these two. Invert map is a whole lecture. That's that one's a bit of a challenge. So um that could be Wednesday and then Friday we can do these two here. Um, so for the rest of today though, we could start on compute mesh if you'd like. Let's see, compute mesh degrees, smoothnesses. Okay, does anybody by chance have this one done that they'd like to, to share with the group? I do, I could share my screen if you'd like. Okay, then I'll stop sharing. I think you should be able to share. Yep, there we go. Okay, so I'm working in MATLAB. Okay. So currently, I actually was able to just finish up editing it all up. So I have it working up to what I'd like. So we're currently uniform, but first, since we're working in uniform, I set P equal to the first entry of degrees and do the same thing with K. Uh, I also have this little error function to make sure that it's not less than one because that would not work. Um, but then the first thing I do is I pull up the degrees. And is this what you're wanting me to do is just kind of yep. go through yep. my code? Yep. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So yeah, first I go and figure out what number of elements we have by taking the length of degrees. And then I kind of hard coded in our extraction operators. So that if N is one, we'll have an identity matrix that's a three by three. If n is two, we have that case. And then for all other cases, I set up the first and the last extraction operators and then fill in everything in between. Okay, so this is for quadratic. Mm -hmm. So have you, do you have the linear in the, 
cubic case in there somewhere yet? I guess I don't know. Do you want me, do you want me to review that? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Just just finish. Uh, okay, we, we can do oh, it. Now. Okay, no, I can if you'd like. Yeah, well, why don't you finish going through and then we'll okay back. Um, so then that's the extraction operators. Then doing the element to global function index map is just two nested or a nested for loop, which we have. This one I basically took notes from class last Friday, I think. Mm -hmm. So we have our number of elements, which is the index E. We have that counter that's going to be indexing up every once in a while. And then A is the number of degrees plus one of our polynomial bases. And then it's just going in and putting that EA um, index and it's the counter. So we should have that one, two, three kind of going in either direction. Mm -hmm. Then last, the compute nodes right now, I just have it as a lin space. So we mm -hmm. calculate how many basis functions or we have. And then that's the number of nodes that we need to have. And then we have this function basically puts one point at the beginning bound and the end bound, and then spaces all the rest of them evenly through the middle. Okay, great. All right, that looks good. Thanks. Any questions from the group on that? Okay, let me share my screen. <clears throat> All right, so if we go back to where we introduce the spline basis, which is topic five, if you go to this example, you'll notice that I give the case for linears is right here. Quadratic is the one you, you have, it's right here. And then I also have cubic right here. Does that make sense? So I just need to hard code in those three different options. Yep. Perfect. Then later I'm gonna give you an algorithm to, to do it more generally. Then you'll be able to do linear, quadratic, and cubic and do some explorations um, when we get the code up and running for convergence and stuff. Um, yeah, so that's so that's where that's found. Okay, yeah, so you just hard code that stuff in for now. Um, all right. So compute mesh, the one thing I would say is, let's go back to the algorithm. In the, um, one of the problems, let's see, I think it's before. Here. So basically, you're doing exercise one right now in your code. You're doing exercise one of the previous set of notes. And then exercise two, this is going to be the invert map routine. Um, so I talk about a way to compute what's called a linear parameterization of nodes. And when you just create, when you just distribute the nodes equally, it actually will create an, a highly nonlinear parameterization. So you may wanna consider implementing this little linear system where you're gonna solve for your nodes so that that map remains linear. And then you can use that as a benchmark case for your newton raphson You'll know your newton raphson is working if it converges in one step because the parameterization is linear. So we can, we can discuss that in detail, but you might wanna go back and read this here. Okay, um, all right, let's go back to what we were doing.
Okay, Kenan or anybody else, any other questions on Compute Mesh? It's fairly straightforward. Dr. Scott, can I ask you a quick question? Sure. Um, so the ops uh, variable, it's the a matrix containing all the extraction operators. So are you expecting that to be like a three-dimensional matrix then because all the extraction operators are also matrices? Or would you expect that to like kind of concatenate and like make it a two-dimensional super long matrix? If that makes sense. Um, you know what my honest assessment is, is put it into a vector and then create indexing that. Okay. Uh, you, but for the simplicity, you can do either, either one. I think I'd probably put them in, you know, like a matrix that's really long. So like the first n columns or the first element and then the next n columns or the next element and so on. Right. And so forth. Okay. Um, but yeah, the reality is, is you normally will cram things in memory in whatever way makes the most sense for your hardware. And then you will write um, indexing schemes that allow you to grab chunks of memory. Um, so maybe I'll write it that way. I don't know yet. It might be too complicated. Okay, any other questions about compute mesh? And I'll create a routine in the notes that gives you an example of this. Okay, uh, compute quadrature. Anybody have this? I do. Okay. Um, the only difference, so I've also brought in degrees for my compute quadrature to my understanding so like the degrees um the degrees kind of tells us how many elements we have right uh so does rules so degrees and rules will actually be the same length okay because i guess so the way i have rules set up is i just decide how many quadrant sure points yeah <laughs> We're just hard coding in the quadrature points though, right? In this? Yeah, for now. Um, it just needs you to stop screen sharing for a little bit. Oh, sorry. Okay. Uh, let me go over here. Okay. So the way I have it set up is my compute, my rules, I just have as P plus one. Um, so if I made that to be P then and that would be the case. And so that's why I bring in both P and rules. Mm -hmm. um, and so I have it set up so I have all the hard-coded quadrature points and quadrature weights based off of how many I want. And at the end, I'm making my index mapping um, where I basically just set all of the first row to be whatever the, you know, the first count of P um, so we'll have a first row of ones, a second row of twos, a third row of threes, and so on. Um, and then just reshape that into a, a vector, one row vector. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see so that reshape routine is similar to what I'm talking about, where they probably just compress it down to a big long vector, and then you the indexing, um, you index into it, right? Mm -hmm. According to the shape. Okay, yeah, that's so good. In this case, um, I mean, do we want degrees and rules to be the same? Because I've always just thought that um, depending on our degree, we want at least like one more quadrature point more than that, but I guess it doesn't need to be. Yeah, so normally there is a, a relationship between the number of points and the number of, and the, and the accuracy of the method in terms of a polynomial degree. Mm -hmm. However, there will be cases where you'll want to integrate more or less than that. And so it's, it's good to leave it um, uh, decoupled. Okay, so if I just said it was two or three and I could change it based off what I need, essentially. Yeah, yeah it's decoupled. So you could, I mean, you could write several routines, one that does it given the degree vector, one that does it given some other information 
Um, but leaving it decoupled is important because you play around with quadrature often in ways that is not necessarily directly associated with the degree of the element. Mm -hmm. It's good to leave it decoupled as two separate arrays. Yeah. So Chris, okay. the one thing that we were saying is the same between P and rules is the length of the vector. Here you've just got one value for each. Right. Um, but but if you're going to get like the number of elements from those, you want them to be a vector of degrees for each element and rules is for each element. Okay, so I could just like a vector of one, two, three. Or, or in this case, it'd probably be the same for each element. So it's just a vector or a vector of two. For the oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Okay, great. All right. Those are pretty simple. Um, my screen. So really the bit the, the big boy here is invert map, right? That's going to be the hardest algorithm that you have to uh, implement outside of just the entire algorithm itself. Um, has anybody taken a stab at this yet? Okay, well, let's talk through kind of how it would work. Let me get, and, we'll, and then I'll get you some more details on that. Okay, invert map algorithm. Okay, so the input here is going to be some x value. And then I'm going to pass in the array of nodes ops. Okay, let's just talk at a high level. What would be the first step? Remember, the algorithm is trying to find the corresponding XCF value. So we have this map, right? X. We're actually trying to find the inverse. All right, so what's the, what's the first step? What do you think? How would you just dream up an algorithm to do this, knowing what you know? Anybody can respond, no, not, not just the BYU students. I don't want to discriminate. Well, I know in part of this, we'll need to make a guess for uh, what XEF is. Very good. That's exactly right. So we have to decide what the first guess is going to be. So what is an, and it'd be better to make an educated guess, right? Like, um, if you think about the way that we're going to do this, um, we have this domain, it's CF, let's say, and it's split into elements. And um, what I return from this algorithm, what's returned from this algorithm is an element index and um, an XC value. But let's be a little bit careful here because we're using this for quadrature and quadrature is happening between minus one and one, which means what's really happening here is every one of these elements has its own little 
local coordinate system. So the element equals one, two, three, four. And so what you wanna find when I say make a guess, what I'm really saying uh, underneath the, the hood is you need, to, you need to make a guess of which element you're in. And maybe I'll call this um, an XC tilde, where XC tilde is, are these little local coordinate systems in each element. So basically we're just saying for simplicity, let's assume that every element has a little coordinate system XC tilde that goes from minus one to one, just for simplicity. And because that's, that's the domain over which we do quadrature, right? We put our quadrature points down in this domain. So let's first talk about how to make an educated guess for the element E. Any thoughts? You have X and you have your entire mesh in phys you have you have the mesh in physical coordinates up here, right? So if I give you some X, how would you determine what element you're in? So an element in the physical domain or in the parametric domain? It doesn't matter, right? An element's an, an element. I'm, I'm, I want an element index. The indexing scheme is the same whether regardless of coordinate system. So I give you an X value. So it makes a lot more sense to use the X coordinate system of the elements to figure out what element you're in. Okay, so well, how would you do that? Using the nodes. So we don't directly have like the barriers of the elements X position, right? We've got the nodes. We could find um, like the, the X coordinate of the boundary between elements somehow, right? Okay, so we could, um, let's just put this down as an idea. Determine for every element, the let's let's call it the left endpoint and the right endpoint we could do that for every element couldn't we so this would be like this is this would be like element one and then you'd have another element two and so on how would you compute the endpoints of the elements by the way given this information. When you say nodes, are you talking node numbers or are you talking node location? These are the, no the actual nodal locations are stored in an array. <laughs> Yeah, we have a lot of work to do next week. So let's just wrap this up. So let's just say, given an element, I want to compute the left and right endpoints in the X coordinate system. X, L, E is going to be equal to a sum over the basis functions, the local basis functions, where the node is going to be um, is a e g e a times v n a and where would we evaluate it at to get the left endpoint 
in the parametric coordinate system if each element has this little local I mean negative one negative one and then if you want the right endpoint this becomes plus one so do you see how you could create an array of all the left and right endpoints of the elements and then if you wanted to make a guess given the x value what element you're in then what would you do I think you would find the index, well, actually, find the uh, left endpoint that the value is above and the right endpoint that the value is below. Here, you got it. That's it. And then you know that that's the element that it's in. So you don't know exactly what the XC coordinate is that corresponds to that X value, but you know that it has to be in there in between those two left and right endpoints. Okay, and then at that point, you can start newton raphson the newton raphson algorithm. So once, you've, once you get E and your guess, and I'll, I'm gonna make this all more precise for you guys, then you can start newton raphson to, to zoom into the exact coordinate that corresponds uh, to the x value. So do you kind of get the flavor? So if I erase some of this stuff, uh, let's see. So the, the basic idea here is that step one, we call it a spatial filter, which means essentially Given the X value, we're gonna guess, we're gonna determine which element we're in and then determine what that, that guess is. And maybe you just set this guess equal to zero, right? So that would mean that you're just guessing it's, if your initial guess, you're gonna guess an XC zero value right at the center of the element. Okay, and then once you have this, step two, is you run a newton raphson iteration. To determine, let's see. At a high level, does that make, does that make sense? Any questions on that? Yes, that does. Um, I have a question. Where would you find the uh, derivative? Mm, yeah, so how do you find the derivative at your guess? So you want to find dx dxc hat. Well, that's nothing more than, again, your nodes. Now you do dn dxc at xc naught tilde. So that's the derivative of the geometric map at your guess that you'll use in the Newton Raphson iteration. So that's why you pass in the nodes and the eg array and the ops and all that so that you can reconstruct your basis and the geometry that you need to perform Newton Raphson. Okay, so I'll lay this out. I'll, I'll create a, a section where I lay out this, this process. Okay, let's stop there and uh, we'll continue on Monday with some group work. So come prepared for that. All right, thanks everybody. Uh, Chris and Kaylin, can you guys stick around? Well, Chris is in here, so maybe just Kaylin. Sounds good. Dr. Scott? Yep. Uh, if you plan on lecturing for these, for the next three classes for next week. Oh, not, um, not, on, not on Friday. I won't. That's okay. Yeah. No. Okay. Yep. Sounds good then.
Thanks, Clint. For Thank you. No problem. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody.